We are back at Precision Transmissions. Uh, we're going to be putting this uh, 350 back together uh, with some uh, pretty uh, intelligent uh, information. So uh, watch, stay tuned. What we got is uh, anytime uh, we put a, a case pushing in the 350, you really want to never use the original driver. You always want to come in with something a little bit bigger and go on top of it and put it down in there like that. That way the bushing doesn't get put in crooked. It's The bushing's not very wide, so it's easy to put it in crooked. Once you put it in with your flush driver like this, then you can come in here with your other driver and put the depth in it. That way the bushing is straight. Now, when, what I mean by depth is, the bearing that sits on there has a chamfer on it right here. You have to put that bearing lower than that chamfer. If you don't, you're, you're fixed to make a lot of metal and mess up a lot of stuff. So, let me show you another little thing. Now, we talked about in play, setting in play a minute ago uh, on the other video and getting the uh, ring uh, away from the end of the drum, which we talked about right here. Getting that with this sets on there. If you shim it too much here, that ring gets out on that ledge. Now we talked about how to shim this thing different ways, like right through here, on top of this planetary. You can put a shim, put that in there like that. And now you just shimmed it forward and you can take the shim, some shim out of here. Well, they also make another way to do it. You can buy these if you can find them. Uh, it goes on top of this bearing here, like this. And this bearing sits down in here like this, which moves everything to the top same principle well we don't have a lot of these when we you know we have to buy them and they're hard to get right now so we can shim them uh, multiple different ways so put a little bit of oil on your bearing set it down in there and here like this now this is a roller bearing uh ring gear right here for your uh rear planet they make a three tab washer style too. This is a really good style. I can mean, race cars, roundy round cars or anything like that. Uh, and also uh, we talked about this bushing right here. This is the plastic piece that sets in there normally. Uh, if you take the, the training part, this can fall out and you can lose it real easy. So we always go back with the bushing. It works a lot better, but if you lose that, you just, all the lube oil is gonna fall out right here and this planter is gonna burn up. So you have to put something in there. So this is our rear planet. You want to check all these gears for wobble right here, all the way around for wobble. Look for any pitting, anything like that. Put a new bushing in it. Make sure your thrust washer good, stuff like that. We'll go over here and dip it in a little bit of oil. Get these nice and lubed up. Now you remember this tranny was already put together once and I took it apart to do this video. Like that. Now this is where your parking paw, when you put it in park, that parking paw grabs right here in here and locks this shaft down that goes to your drive shaft. But a roller bearing spins so much nicer. Let's put this down in there. Oh, excuse me, let me back up a little bit. Cause we're gonna go into really detail on this thing. We need to uh, know how to check uh, clutch clearance in the bottom down here. Since we upgraded this to the, the wide Sprague assembly, to the 4L60 E Sprague and, and, and uh, support back here, the clearance could be a little bit different if you just put the 350 clutches back in new with steels. So we're gonna set these down in here like this and we're gonna check some things. like that so we're going to set this clutch down in there but i'm going to show you something when i put this together i used all 350 clutches put it back together and my my in play was wrong it was way off so there was no way to physically set it so what we do as builders we've, i've been doing it 40 years been doing it for a long time we can take and shave these clutches off the back like this put them together because they're already locked together anyway and what i did is i add the thickness of that steel right there to my clearance and that's all I needed. So now I can set this down in here like this. 
put this down in here like that, I could come in here and reach under my fingers and I could check my end play. You can check it down through here and you get it to with air by watching the travel of the piston or you could check it here with your fingers and feel it that way too. So, that's how you can do it by like that. So, we'll put our planetary assembly back down in here. These clutches have already been soaked, but I'm gonna go ahead and dip them again. You always wanna soak your clutches for 15, 20 minutes and they will just suck the oil right into them. That way the tranny uh, thinks it's been working all the time. The clutch doesn't know any different. All these steels were really good shape. All we did was have to buff the gloss off of them and put them back in. It saves the customer money and uh, all the way around. You see how that's set in there like that? Those two clutches that I buffed are locked together. There's, there's no way they're gonna move identical, okay? Now we're gonna come in here and put our anti-clock spring in. That keeps that support from rattling when you go from park to drive or drive to reverse. It sets down in here just like this, just like that. Now this support, if you notice, it's got a wide spot right here. If you look down in here, you have a wide spot right here in this case. But when you stick this in, this tail on this rattle spring right here has to set down in here right. So if you take this and put that in the wide spot, you'll notice right there how that's hitting that ramp on that spring. See that? So now I'm going to take it, set it down in there, I'm going to push it. Now look where it's at. You're going to take this race, lock it down in the planet. Now, you're going to take your snap ring and put it in the case, but it goes in a special manner. If you look right here, I'm putting it in between that anti-clunk. If you put that snap ring over that anti-clunk like that, it's going to pop out and you put it in reverse. You have to put that inside here just like this. Take that screwdriver. Just like that, where that anti spring, or that spring is just like that. That's why it's not setting over. Now we're gonna go here with our thrust washer that goes against the shell. They do make them in plastic and brass. Uh, depending on what we do, uh, if it's a race car or uh, you know, whatever it is, it depends on what we put in there. This is our shell. You want to look at all the gears, make sure there's no pitting. You want to put your new bushings in. Put that down in there. The same way with the the forward planet, you want to check all your gears and make sure they don't wobble and make sure the thrust washer is not knocked out of it and make sure where your bushing is going to ride is in good shape too. Dip in a little bit of oil, spin it around, and now we're going to set it down on here. Spin it a little bit, come on a little tighter, take a little hammer. Knock it down. Not a metal hammer either. Yeah, not a metal. And now you're going to take your snap ring and you're going to take a screwdriver and put that right in there just like that. Just like that. Now, since we didn't put the shim at the bottom on that bottom bearing, we're going to put a shim up here under this washer here like this. Fits in there perfect. Set it down in there just like that. We have a new bushing. The bushing's been put in this way where it's flush. Make sure you buff it a little bit where it... Just like that. 
And you have another washer that goes right here. Now, we're gonna put our, we already got our piston stuff in our forward drum. You wanna make sure these surfaces are good here on this shaft here that runs in this bushing. You wanna make sure this surface here is also good that runs on this washer. 350s are bad about this area right through here. You need to check it out really close. You can buff your shaft with some Scotch-Brite like we talk about. Clean it up nicely. Now we do have our forward clutches here. They've already been soaked. I'm gonna hit them one more time. Got our steels buffed. We still gonna leave our wave in. Uh, it's not a high stock converter, so. Let me get up in the light, and I think you might see a little bit better. Yeah, you're fine. It's a little easier. Now, this is just a stock forward clutch right here. Uh, it's not a clutch that's coming on under load or anything like that. You're going to be idling when you put in gear and stuff like that. So once it's on, you ain't going to slip it. Now, when you put these clutch packs together, this is how you identify. Um, how do you set your plates up here? See this right here? The clutch ain't coming all the way to here. See that right there? Or if you look at this plate, it's got that step built into it. Well, these plates have different steps, 30,000, 40, 50, whatever step. You can pick this uh, size plate to determine uh, your thickness uh, and your clearance on your clutch. Then stick this in there. If I get too thick of one, then when I put it in, my clutch will lock down and it won't turn. Perfect. So now we're going to get over here to our direct drum. We're going to put it together. Now, uh, when you take these drums apart and you clean them with air and stuff, this check ball right here will blow out real easy. Real easy. Uh, I wanted to show you too, on your forward drum, you also have a check ball that blows out real easy when you take it apart. If it blows out, the clutch won't pressure up. It'll go into gear, but it'll slip. So you want to make sure that check ball is there. Flip it over. You can see it on both drums. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, convert this uh, drum to a, a full piston style pressure drum. The, we're leaving this seal out right here. Now the pressure of the fluid is going to apply this whole piston instead of just this little bit right here. Now, let me tell you a little secret. If you leave this ring out in a lockup 350, you will not have lockup. Now, what I mean by lockup is uh, it brings the clutch on in the torque converter. Now, to identify it, this is your standard 350 shaft. This is your lockup shaft. It has an O-ring right here. If you have a 350 that has this type of shaft in it, you cannot leave that seal off. If you do, you will not have lockup. So same way on a 204R, if you leave that seal off, 4L80E, you leave that seal off, you won't have lockup. A 400, you leave it off, there's no lockup anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Now we did put a five clutch piston in here. Uh, we have these pistons shaved down 120 thousandths to get them in there. And then we can uh, add an extra clutch and get five clutches in third. If you shave this piston down too far, uh, the steel can get uh, caught under this land right here and uh, won't even let the clutch come on. So you gotta make sure you cut that just enough. I usually have 1520 I'm done when I take them to my guy and he does them for me. Of course, you do have to have some type of a press to yeah. press that down. Now, when you put this snap ring in, these drums spin at real high RPM. 
So they have these little lands in here to keep that snap ring from coming out. You don't want to put this right here. You know, in here to here is fine, but you don't want to put that opening right there. You could have, you could cause a problem. Now, since we're going back with five clutches, we've already got the steels buffed up really nice. Uh, we're using the high energy green clutches. Now, if you look at this again here, you notice this clutch, you got that land right there. See how far it's below it? Now, anytime you go with more clutches, you have to have more clearance. So you have to go with a thinner plate to give it even more clearance. So you gotta remember that more clutch is more clearance. If not, you can burn the clutch back up and not even be using it. And now this tranny's already been built before and clearance has all been set. So we're just showing you what it looks like when we put it back together, so. Get that on there. Now, here we go again on this bushing. Now, when you put these bushings in, this big one like this, you wanna make sure you use a driver that's bigger. That way, when you put it in, it goes flush like that. Then you come in here and you put your bushing in here that fits the bushing and you drop, knock it down to where it needs to be because this bearing right here has got another step. If you notice, if you put it flush, that step's gonna hit that bushing. So you have to knock it down just a little bit to give you some slack right in here. See that clearance? Just like that. Right. But I always use a bigger driver to put my bushings in. That way I know they go in straight. If you try to use the bushing driver that it's like that, it's harder to get them in dead straight. So. Hey, so that's my bushing driver. I've had it for about five years, yeah. six years. Now this is a 40 year experience bushing driver. <laughs> it, it used, it's about a quarter inch shorter, but this thing can tell you some stories. Yeah, it sure can. <laughs> so this is my son's about what, 10 years? Yeah, 10 probably 10 years. years. Yeah, 10 oh. years. <laughs> that's funny worked itself around. Gonna turn that over, flip it around there till you get him to go down. You heard it hit right there, yeah. solid. Solid, solid. Now you're gonna come over here. You got your washer, your snap ring, everything. Now you're gonna take and set this down on here just like that. And I'm gonna grab this with these pliers. I'm gonna set it and I'm gonna work this. Slowly work it until you get that to set down in there. go all the way down so now you're gonna come in here and put your engine braking band in you got two ends they look different this one here locks into the case just like that sorry guys <clears throat> trying to reposition my hand getting a cramp so we're going to add our intermediate clutches now. We've already got our steel cleaned up. Our new clutches soaked really nice. Now, I'm going to show you a little difference here. Uh, this is a 350s intermediate steel. This is a lockup 350 steel. Let me turn it where it looks right. They're missing two teeth. It doesn't matter. I don't know why they did it, but they did it. It'll, so, but they will interchange. Okay. I, I brought this deal out. I went and got another one just so you could uh, 
see what the shininess looks like on these things. This steel is in perfect shape, nothing wrong with it, but I'm gonna hit it with my buffer and, and show you what it looks like. These are uh, Transmission Command's best friend. I'm really good at this, so you get kind of zoom in, you can kind of see a little bit better how I turn this thing. <laughs> about twice around uh, with that pad. You can get these at Harbor Freight, any places like that. Get this cleaned up. Now you can see the difference in what that looks like. Really nice. That's about the side of the way it's going again, so it doesn't matter. But you can take and just put that in there just like that. Take and put your wave plate in there just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble our pump. We've already put our bushing in and our front seal in. We glue them in and then we put our bushing in the same way we use a bigger driver to put the bushing in and then we come back with a 14 driver and uh, drop it down where it needs to be. That way we know that bushing is dead straight. Now your pump gears, they make different thicknesses of these gears. So when we take our pump apart, we'll mic them. That way we get the right size uh, and go that way. So I'm gonna set this in here first, just like this, set it in there. I'm gonna take this gear Stick it on the top of it like that, and I'm gonna spin it. Just like that. If your gear's too tall, then it ain't gonna turn. But you wanna check this right here. It should only be about three thousandths clearance in between here and here. So, just like that. You don't really have to flood these trannies with tranny fluid. When we fill them up here, we can fill them up in five minutes or, or two seconds. I mean, they fill up really quick. We pump the flood in them. So, you want to check your pump straighter? Everything looks good here and here. We've already put new bushings in it, your new high pressure rings. We've already put your intermediate piston in with seals. You want to got, line it up with this two notches here. To this wider plate right here. Some of these retainers right here have the springs made on them. Makes it a lot easier and nicer to work with, but some of these old style, they just old style. If you do all the modifications of this unit that I'm showing you, it'll work really nice for you. Now this is a multi-pattern, so you just gotta, gotta turn it, figure out where it needs to go. Got lucky that time, set it on there. What I like to do is grab this pump and just kind of move it like this. If there's any high spots on there, I'm gonna knock them down that accidentally got put in there, just moving it around a little bit. Do that a little bit, line it back up, put your, your uh, bolts in. I'll put the bolts in until I get just a little bit of tension on this piston, this retainer right here and the piston. And I grab my speed handle and we'll tighten it down to get just a little bit more tension. Everybody's seen a speed handle before? That's what one looks I don't like. I don't know if they exist, but no. it's all we use around here. And we do have a band alignment tool that aligns the pump. We put it around here and tie it down. Tie it down like this a little bit. 
If I take your hammer, if I move it around, We'll take a screwdriver and look down in here to make sure you get it lined up because it will turn on you a little bit. And get these holes where they're all lined up all the way around. Just like that. They're smooth. And then go ahead and take your speed handle. Find it down. And you're gonna come and grab your torque wrench. Now you gotta remember, this is my favorite one. It's about 40 years old, so. No, I'm just kidding. We tack them down to about 12, 13 inch pounds. Get quiet. Did get quiet, didn't it? <laughs> what happens when you concentrate? A lot of concentration going on. I hope y'all feel that in the video because there was a lot of concentration going on. And while I have a little time, I do want to thank y'all. He appreciates y'all very much for watching. Like I said, we are up here on our day off to do this for you guys. Having a good time. Yeah, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. Now you do got your three rings. One you leave off. One, two, three. This one leaves off. This here is just a support. It's not a ring. So the bearing type pumps is the only one that's got that ring right there. Support. If you ring. have a washer pump, it won't have that. And you got to be careful too. I've seen people do it. I've seen them put this pressure ring in that ring right there and not even put a ring here and don't have third <laughs> or reverse. So you want to make sure you, you don't have that problem. We're gonna grab a torque converter real quick because we always like to make sure our pumps spin freely before we put them in. So after we get it bolted together, in just case we have a nick on our gear and it don't turn or something like that, you want to check it. So I think put a converter in here and, sit and turn it. That tells you that my pump gear is turning free. Everything feels really nice. So now we're gonna take put this thing in. I've already got the gasket in, so lubrication. His finger is his lineup point. He's just been doing it 40 something I'm years. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and kind of line them holes up really good. And we've already put uh, the new seals on these bolts and stuff, so. And the rebuild kit, they get them correct. I love watching how it works. 
Let me tell you, you just can't pick up a speed handle and be able to do that either. <laughs> Take some practice. What did we torque those to? Uh, same thing, about 13, 14 pounds. Okay. They don't need to be a lot. Now, if you torque them too much, now, uh, it's not good you pull the threads out of this stuff, so. Because on, in second gear, the, th the it's always trying to push the, the pump out. Had to put my spec. We're gonna set this up here real quick. Man, he still got it, I promise. We're gonna take a little break. If you look here, this hole right here, it's kind of oh, hard yep. to grab it. I gotta grab it with something else. Yeah. In play. You can grab this right here and pick up on it. Let me get the camera. Right. It's got a hole right here in the shaft. You just took a screwdriver and then you pick up and see your end plate. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a break real quick. Give me something to drink. Got a little sweat going on my brow. And uh, we'll be back here in a minute. We're back here at Precision Transmissions on our 350 that uh, we've been assembling. Uh, got a little bit of sweat knocked off my head, so. We'll get this put uh, back together. So what we got here is we're going to be putting the parking assembly in. Uh, normally you can tell these bolts will be a 9 16 uh, Some of them have a half inch head, but most have a 9 16 bolt. It's kind of a funny looking bolt. But you take turn the output shaft where it locks it into park. That way you can get in there and put this in with your finger like this and set it on there. Yeah, I'll already get my speed handle. Look at it. My torque key is about 20. And you want to check it. That wet lock's good. Now we've already replaced the Teflon seal on this thing here. It's a solid seal we put on. Uh, this is your uh, band, uh, engine braking band uh, servo. It's got a little bitty washer under here. You want to make sure you put that back on there. See that washer? Take it on there. Set your spring down in the hole. Kind of put your finger over this. Put it down in there. Now I've already sized this seal. So it went down in there a lot easier than normal. So you want to size it. This, what, this is, I'll show you how you kind of do that. You can take, put that seal on there, grab it just like this, set it down in there, and you can kind of wobble it around and pull it back out and it sizes it perfect. Kind of a little trick there, but it works really easy that way. Now since we're shift kitting this thing out, uh, we're only gonna install two balls here instead of the four, one here and one here. So we're just gonna install these two right here like this and leave these two out. Now on the separator plate, since we're shift kitting this, we're gonna enlarge these two holes right here. These are your feed holes to your shift valves. These right here. So let's stick this on here. They think about a 20 thousandths thicker. About, they're about 120 thousandths hole in that. Well, well, I'm saying actually going thicker with it. How much bigger? About 120,000. I'm not sure what the factory hole is. Oh, okay, I got you. Yes, sir. Uh, but these are your guide for your plate, these two bolt holes here. And then you've got your plate.
Uh, sometimes these bolts will be a little stiff. If they'll try to grab inside metal against aluminum, you want to take put a little bit of oil on that bolt, stick it back down in the hole. Just a little bit, because sometimes they get dry, enough to dry. They'll try to grab metal to aluminum, and it's not good. Same way, about 10, 12 pounds on these. Fine. Take your alignment bolts out. And this is what it should look like, just like that. Got your two balls in here. Leave your two balls out here. Now you've got this little S-shaped clip right here that's going to move your manual valve. So you stick your manual valve in, the valve body, with a hole like that, and come over here and stick that in right there. And you can get it just like that. They can slide your valve body down. Gently put it on the valve body gaskets. Put your guide bolt in the hole. Both of your guide bolts right here. Just like that. And you can take and go ahead and tighten it down. Make sure everything moves. Make sure your S clip is still in your manual valve. Now, if you get too much play here, see that? Really not too bad. You can take a screwdriver and bend this over just a little bit right here. And get that in there a little bit deeper. Get over here and get all your... Actually, I mean, it's my 13th socket. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to line your roller up with your rooster cone. Because this will be off just a little bit. You can move it a little bit side to side. Start at the middle and work your way out, saying about 12 pounds. You always want to go back over them and check them because there's so many of them, it's easy to miss one. Now, this is the passive gear linkage that we're going to do away with since he's got going to run a cable to the carburetor. And we just make us a little wire and push this uh, around this bolt right here and anchor it. The main thing when you do this, you want to bend this, you want to check the travel of this little valve right here. It's a two stage. You want to make sure you're not into the second stage any. 
See, I'm not into that second stage. It's got a slight spring there, and then it gets a heavier string for the rest of it. You just do not want to go into that when you do this. And there you go. Got a nice little brass filter. I like these better over the plastic, but both of them are cleanable. Don't forget your gasket. There we go, valve body on, shifter all set up, everything looks really good. Go grab a gas. Looking good. Now we only use cork gaskets no matter on all units that we do, they just work really good. Uh, we don't put any sealer on them or anything like that. They need to go on totally dry. On a chrome pan, make sure you buff as much chrome off of it as you can to get the gasket to kind of stick to it. takes a long to put pan bolts in. I bet you're still on record time on putting one of these together. Well. Anytime we put a pan on a gas, we always use a speed handle. I don't know how you look at it. We'll go around and sink it with the speed handle and it'll never leak. We just don't have no issues. We just come around, just kind of hit it, feel it, feel it. And you can feel it stop. Feel it stop. Feel it stop. Same way. The main thing was getting them equal all the way around. If you can feel the spin, stop. 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 Uh, now the next time it goes around it's going to get a little tighter you can feel it slowly cinching down but it'll keep moving see it keeps on moving poor gas is kind of weird how they settle in and see it's starting to snow down good now now tomorrow when we come back in you might be able to even hit it a little bit more because it might shrink just a little bit more. But that's how you do a pan gasket. Keep it a little dry, no uh, type of thing or anything like that. Or impact. So we got our one two accumulator right here. This is what softens the one two shift. Since we left our two check balls out in the, the valve body, it's gonna firm up second gear anyway. Uh, we left our uh, wave in the second gear clutch to soften it anyway too. So. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, accumulator in. And then we're going to kind of stretch this O-ring a little bit and we're going to set it down in here. If you notice, it sets right pretty in that groove. Now, if we put this tranny together and we still think it doesn't shift hard enough in second gear, which it, it's probably going to work really nice, you can leave this spring out uh, and it's going to firm it up a bunch. But I like to uh, mess with, leave the spring option at my choice because if I don't like the way second gear uh, 
shifts, I don't have to pull the pan off or put check balls back in, change my holes or anything like that in the plate. I can always go back to this spring and take it in or out. So I'm gonna put this back in. If I don't like it, I don't think it works shifts good enough for the power of the motor, I'll uh, take this spring back out. So we'll put it in for now, put a little oil on this piston. You put it in at an angle just like that because it's so easy to cut that O-ring. So I'm gonna take that like that and I'm gonna take this rubber mallet, try not to smash my finger, and I'm gonna tap it in there just like that and hold it with my thumb. It's kind of hard to do. Stick that down in there, push that in. Tap it just like that. That thing is seated really good now. So you're good to go right there. So we've got the next step is gonna be our vacuum modulator. There's really no tricks to it. Just make sure the hole's clean. It blows out good, stuff like that. Put it in. Now, the vacuum modulator, we always go with an adjustable style that has a screw in the end of it right here. If we want it to shift a little later, or just a little bit firmer, we could screw this screw in. Now we can take and screw that screw in. It'll take all the shifts and make, take them up or down. It will not separate them. You can't take the third, move it up, or the second, move it down. It's gonna move them both up or down. To do the other thing, you gotta take it apart and uh, work the valve body over to do anything like that. Same here, about 12 pounds. It'll be fine on the back very well. Now we've already blocked this uh, passenger cable off and did the modifications on the inside for it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put our governor in. We're gonna put a little oil on it. Put it in where it touches all the way, just like that. Now these overhaul kits always come with a little black O-ring that you can put on right here. I never use it because when I put it on, it always squirts out the top or something like that. So I always take a good RTV and just put me a bead all the way around this cover. Just like that. Just take it smoothly with your finger, just a little bit. Just like that. Then when you put this cover on here like this, I want you to take, turn it. Move it around just a little bit, kind of move that stuff around a little bit, just like that. And then you're gonna take and put it on. It's gonna squirt out no matter how you look at it. What we do is come and grab a little chisel or something or some type of, and take and put that all the way on. Just like that. Now, if you need to set your governor depth, the back and forth moving on it like this, what we do is we you can take and tap in on this cover just a little bit like this with a little hammer. Tap on that and come in here and check it. You don't want it solid, you want just a little bit of movement just like that and you're fine. Grab your clip that holds the cover on and put it on, real simple. Now, to do the speedometer gear, you always want to put a little bit of oil on this shaft and a little bit on the gear. You want to put this tab right here in the hole, just like that. You want to slide this gear over it, just like that. The gear's gonna be tight, so it's not gonna go on. We have a little tool that we've had for 40 years that we take and just sit there and tap that thing on just nice and pretty. 
It's behind the little flap right here that holds the gear on. It's on where it needs to be. To that go. way you don't break it. These are real easy to break. Our tail housing, we've already got our seal in and our bushing. We're gonna put our seal on it. Go square all the way around. About 30 pounds is fine on those. Now, we get back to the speedometer gear. These things are notorious for leaking. But the, the depth in here, you can actually get two seals in here if you do it right. So, what we're going to do, I had an extra seal, one come in the kit, so we're going to stick it down in here. And we're going to slide it down in there. Just like that, it's nice and flush. Then you're gonna grab the other one, make sure it's pointing the right direction, stick it in there. Just like that. Now you've got two seals. Well, you got this little wire retainer that holds them seals in. You can take and stick that right back in there too. Just like that. So now when you stick the gear in, you got two nice seals right here on the end and you don't have to worry about leaking because it never leaks here, always here. Put your little oil on it, slide it in. There you go. Now this does go a certain way. It's got a tab that sets on there just like that. So you want to point it right when you stick it in. Anyway, here we got our 350 back together. All performance clutches uh, and stuff, uh, all new bushings. Uh, going behind a 68 Camaro with a big block 396, should make five or 600. Uh, and this one tranny should hold up pretty nice. We'll get it all painted up and uh, stuff for the gentleman and uh, get it in his car for him. If y'all need anything done, give us all our precision transmissions. We do it right. Come by and see us. Have a good day.